What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing some battles in the Weather Cup running what I believe to be the most underrated and possibly the strongest closer in the entire meta, Kyrim. Kyrim has the unique ice and dragon typing and that dragon typing is certainly what makes it strong in this meta. Of the four typings available, Water is the obvious dominant force here as it's able to deal super effective damage up against Rock types, up against Fire types, and also resist the Ice typing. But there are a few Pokemon that have the Grass subtyping that are able to deal super effective damage up against those Water types. So those are the two most common and strongest typings in this meta. But Kyrim, because of that Dragon typing, is able to resist the damage from both Water and Grass types, meaning it is extremely strong in this meta. So for the rest of the team, I'm running Blaziken in the lead and Kingdra as the save swap. I would have preferred to try out Palkia just because it's a bit more unique, but unfortunately I don't have any below 2500 CP, so that wasn't an option for me. But with that being said, let's get into the question of the day. For the first time this season, Niantic is trying out a few themed cups in the Ultra League, but what I want to know is if we were to see a themed cup return that we've previously seen in the Great League or in the Little Cup, which one would be best suited for the Ultra League? Let me know in the comment section below, and with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so going into the first battle here, we lead into an Alolan Sand Slash. So this is the dream lead, the best thing we could possibly see. They switch into a Sea King here, probably going to be double or triple legacy here. They're going straight for an Icy Wind that's going to debuff my attack, but that's not going to do too much damage. I'm going to go for the Outrage. There's no point baiting the Octazooka. Outrage lands, it nearly KOs. I'm able to Dragon Breath, farm them down. They come back in with the Sand Slash. I'm happy to let the Kingdra go down here. And also the Switch Clock isn't going to be up yet so I'm instantly gonna come back in with the Blaziken. My opponent is forced to throw their energy here as their switch clock hasn't come up yet so they want to avoid as much counter damage as possible. They come in with Jellison, we go straight for the Brave Bird, we land it, we come in with the Kyrim and my opponent already realizes that there's just nothing they could do up against my team composition and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game and now we're seeing Jellison in the lead. I'm going to safe swap into Kyrim. I'm just going to note that initially I did interchange Kingdra and Kyrim as the safe swaps but eventually I stuck with Kingdra as I realized Kyrim is a really strong closer in this meta. I accidentally shield the bubble beam there or not accidentally I wrongly predicted that they would go for a shadow ball which is unfortunate. They come in with an Obama Snow here. They're going for the Weather Ball. I'm going to go for a Draco Meteor here, and this should take out the Obama Snow, but they do shield it up, which I'm perfectly fine with because I can come in with Blaziken. I am resisting everything this Obama Snow can throw, apart from Outrage if they're running that, but I don't see why they would. We're able to counter Farm than Town. I'm going to go for a Brave Bird here just before they reach a charge move, and then I'm going to switch into the Kingdra. Brave Bird does get the final shield. They stay in with the Jellison, and are they going to double bait me with the bubble beams. I call it, it's a shadow ball and I correctly shield this time. They switch into another Sea King, so I didn't expect to see so many 100% uh, maxed out Sea Kings, but uh, that's just the craziness of the Weather Cup. They go for an Icy Wind. It doesn't do that much damage, but like I said, it does debuff my attack. I'm able to get to the Octazooka here on the CMP tie with their charge move. It just barely doesn't take them out because of that Icy Wind debuff, but Shadow Ball doesn't take me out either. I even switch into the Blaziken there, counter farm down the Jellison, and I'm able to take that game. Into the next game, we lead into a Polyrath. This is a bit tricky, so I'm going to stay in initially, farm up to when they get to a Dynamic Punch or a Scald. I switch into Kingdra, trying to catch a Scald, but unfortunately, they don't throw. They hold on to their energy, so that puts me in a pretty tricky situation, especially when they mirror this matchup here. I'm going to let this move go through because there's literally no point shielding, and I'm not even sure why they threw there. Potentially, they figured that we might be able to Dragon Breath farm them down at the same time, so I come back in with Blaziken. I have a Brave Bird loaded, so I'm just going to throw it straight away once I see that Polyrath typing coming in here, going for the Brave Bird. Brave Bird 
gets the final shield from her opponent. So I switch into the Kyrim and they have a Razor Leaf Abomber Snow. And now we're in an exceedingly good position here. I can comfortably shield up this Weather Ball. Farm up to pretty much 100 energy. Go for the Dragon Claw. I'm actually even going to undercharge this Dragon Claw just to make sure I get to that Draco Meteor. And I do get to it. And I can go for the Draco Meteor up against the Polyrath. And this will easily take out the Polyrath. And I'm able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent there, into the next game. We lead into a into an Abomber Snow, so a really good lead for us. My opponent switches into Kingdra. I'm switching into my own Kingdra here, and my opponent is actually going to go straight for an Octazooka. It means I don't have to shield this, and I actually have two pretty good responses to Abomber Snow, assuming it is a Razor Leaf Abomber Snow. So I go for the Outrage. I get a shield advantage in this matchup. I can come in with the Blaziken here and counter farm them down before they get to another Octazooka. Put a in a very comfortable position they come in with the swamper i'm gonna go for a cmp tie here on the hydro cannon brave bird does get the final shield from my opponent and now i'm in a very good position once again because kyrim is a brilliant closer here especially when my opponents aren't running fairy types if we see a fairy type then it's going to be very difficult here as we are running triple dragon type moveset they come back in with the abomber snow it is a razor leaf user so that is perfect i'm going for the dragon claw here this will do a pretty decent chunk of damage to the abomber snow and because they're running razor leaf they're going to be super slow to get to these charge moves i'm thinking can i just fully dragon breath farm them down and i'm able to i have a draco meteor loaded and this will easily be enough to take out the swamper and we take that game so once again, Kyrim just being an absolutely insane closer. If we can save a shield advantage for the Kyrim endgame, then we're going to be in a very good position. Here we led into a tentacle. I switch into the Kingdra here. And unfortunately, the Gyarados just barely gets to the crunch before I can throw my charge move. Crunch does a lot of damage, but we do tank it. I can get to the Outrage. Outrage gets a shield from my opponent. And now we're still in a very tricky situation here is because... The Blaziken is going to take super effective damage from the Aquatel, but Kyrim will take super effective damage from the Dragon Breaths. So I come in with the Blaziken here. I'm going to over farm as much as possible. Go for a Blaze Kick here. Unfortunately, I just bashed the uh, table here, so that is why my face cam just shaked a bit, but let's not worry about that. I go for a Brave Bird on a CMP tie with whatever this tentacle is throwing, and they let it go through, putting me in a very good position here. I let the Acid Spray go through, it doesn't even take us out. I come in with Kyrim, they don't switch out, and that's because they've got a Razor Leaf Ludicolo in the back, and you're going to see when these opponents have a Grass type in the back, Kyrim just absolutely feasts, as there's not a lot they can do. Razor Leaf also a super slow charging move so we're able to get to the Dragon Claw and the Draco Meteor and we take out the Ludicolo and we take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. That was the 5-0 in my first set running this team. Into the next set here we lead into a Shadow Gyarados lead. Awful lead for us, a massive core breaker for the full team. I'm just going straight for the blaze kick. I know it's resisted. I can pretty much guarantee they're not going to shield, but that's exactly what I want. I want guaranteed damage up against this Gyarados. They go for an Aquatel. We do actually win the CMP tie here. So I'm going to switch, trying to catch the next one. They switch into their own Kingdra, and once again, my opponent's just going straight for that Octazooka, meaning I can safely no shield this, go for the Outrage, and I can guarantee a shield or I can guarantee switch advantage. We do get the switch advantage here as the Outrage takes out that Kingdra and they come in with a Tentacruel. So this is going to be a very tricky matchup here. We are down a shield. We do have a Blaze Kick loaded on that uh, Blaziken, but we're not in a best position here. We're going for the Dragon Claw here just before they reach a charge move. And actually, they're farming up a ton of energy, meaning that this could potentially be a Sludge Wave. So we shield it up. It is a Sludge Wave. We're going to farm up energy here. We go for the Dragon Claw, and they make a brilliant catch onto the Gyarados. But actually, this is pretty good for me because Gyarados was loaded. We switch. We go for the... <laughs> the Blaze Kick here. And it was a CMP tie, and that was perfect. Uh, that's a really tricky move to pull off there. They go for a Scold, and I'm able to get a Dragon Claw off, and I'm able to take this game with the CMP tie sack swap there. So, GG's to that opponent there. That was my only win condition, and I was able to pull it off. 
So into the next game here, we lead into a Barbaric also. It's a water type, but it's actually going to be pretty weak to Blaziken because we do have counter and it's also part rock type. We're going for a Blaze Kick here, hoping that my opponent's going to throw a Blaze Kick into me, but they don't throw straight away, so I'm going to have to shield this up. It could be a Brave Bird, but actually they just bait me, but they're not able to get to a Brave Bird there, so that's perfect. But now they come in with a Pre-Marina and you're going to see Charm is absolutely devastating for this team because we've got two Pokemon weak to it and Blaze can, although it's neutral, does deal resisted damage with every charge move and fast move, aside from the Brave Bird here, and also it's very squishy. They make a catch onto the Barbarical, but we do double resist the Fury Cutters here, so we do farm up to another Blaze Kick there. We're going to switch, catch the move here. They just go for a Grass Knot, which is perfect. At this point, there's no way they're going for another Grass Knot, so I will shield this up. It's a Stone Edge, so a very good shield there. That would have taken me out. I'm going for a Dragon Claw. I really need them to shield one of these charge moves, but they don't. I'm going to be able to get to another Dragon Claw, and if they don't shield this, then we're just going to be losing here, because Dragon Claw doesn't do enough. I come in with the Blaziken, hoping that for whatever reason, they don't shield, but of course, they do have that shield, and they're able to to charm me down and take that game so up against a fairy type very difficult to win with this team but aside from that it's a very strong team and here we lead into a cray dilly here and this is this is where we want to see it these stone edges are going to do a ton of damage but they are neutral they switch into a tentacruel here so i'm going to come in with the kingdra perhaps i should have come in with the kyrim because we can only throw the resisted octazookas here for spammy moves because the outrage does take a while to get to we throw on the cmp tie hoping to get that debuff but we don't get it and now at this point we're not able to get to another Outrage, and they do outpace me here to the Sludge Wave. I don't want to go down both shields here, so I do let it go through, but I should be able to Dragon Breath, farm them down. And I am able to, which is perfect. They come in with a Razor Leaf, a Bomber Snow, and once again, Kyrim is looking to be in a very good position here. We go for a Dragon Claw. My opponent lets it go through. I'm going to go for another Dragon Claw up against the Abomasto. They let it go through as well, and they're not even able to get to a charge move. They were looking to completely sacrifice that Abomasto. Snow. But I'm just going to be dealing way too much fast move pressure here. They go for a Grass Knot. It does take me out. But I can just easily counter farm down the Cradilly and take that game. So GG's there. Well played to my opponent. Into the next game, we lead into a Kingdra here. So I'm going to stay in for a while, eventually swap into my own Kingdra, trying to catch an Octazooka, but my opponent doesn't throw straight away. I'm not sure if it's an Outrage or not. I go for the shield. Unfortunately, I am baited, but they don't get the attack debuff, which is fine. They come in with a Jellison. I can tank the Shadow Ball here, so I will, and I'm going to go straight for the Outrage. I want guaranteed damage or a shield, and I'm able to get a shield in this matchup, so I'm perfectly fine with that. They are going to be forced to throw another charge move before they're able to Hex Farm me down, so I'm fine with that. They go for a Shadow Ball. Bubble Beam wouldn't have taken me out. And at this point, I can safely shield once and completely Dragon Tail or Dragon Breath farm them down. But they actually switch into a Cradilly here. So I'm going straight for the Draco Meteor. This will do massive damage and it lands and I can switch into the Blaziken. They don't even have the Stone Edge yet. They have to go for a Grass Knot. It's resisted. I have a ton of energy. I'm going for the Brave Bird, but I forgot they switched out of that Jellicent. So they do just tank that move on the Jellicent. And now it's a race who can Dragon Breath farm down each other first and I'm able to get there before they get to a charge move and I'm able to take that game. And now going into the final battle of this second set, we lead into another Jellicent. I'm switching into the Kingdra here. They're going to stay in. I'm actually just going to no shield this here and they go for the Shadow Ball. It does a lot of damage, but it's not enough to warrant a shield. So I'm gonna go for the Outrage here, and we do get a shield from my opponent, which is nice. They're gonna over farm a little bit, throw just before we get to another Octazooka here, and they have to go for the Shadow Ball, which they do, but now I can come in with the Kyrim, and as long as they don't have a Fairy type, we should be in a very good position here. I will shield up this move. It's probably a Shadow Ball. And it is the Shadow Ball, but now I can get a massive energy advantage going to going into whatever is going to come in here. They come in with the Cradilly. I'm going for that Draco Meteor. We've seen it land once already. This time it's shielded, but I'm going to switch into Blaziken. They come in with the Kingdra here, but I'm able to get to a Brave Bird before they can throw an Octazooka. Brave Bird 
takes out the Kingdra, and at this point we should be in a pretty good position here, especially when they throw on a CMP tie with the Blaze Kick. Blaze Kick lands, it doesn't do an awful lot of damage, but that is fine. We get the CMP tie here, and we're going to be easily able to Dragon Breath farm down this Cradili. We can safely shield this up, and we should be able to farm them down here and take that game. So GG's to that opponent there, and that was a 4 and 1 set, and now I will show one bonus battle. This is what happens when we face a Charmer in the lead. For any of you wondering, well what do you do against Charm? Well here is what we do, we lose. <laughs> we're going to stay in with the Blaze again, and we're going to go for two Blaze Kicks here, but unfortunately they will just be able to fully Charm farm me down. They're going to go for the Weather Ball here, it does get my shield. I go for a Blaze Kick here, and I really hope that they let this go through, but they do double shield. They obviously recognize we're very weak to charm in the back. And I'm going to hope that I can survive this and get to an Octazooka. Because I don't want to use the second shield. And I'm barely not able to get there. Which is just... It's terrible for me. I have to come in with the Kyrim here. I'm able to Dragon Breath farm them down. But they have a Tapu Fini in the back. So there's literally nothing I could do there. So unfortunately, when we see Fairy types, this team is going to be absolutely destroyed. But otherwise, I think it's a really strong team. So it really depends on what Pokemon you're seeing in the meta currently. If you're seeing a ton of Fairy types, then this team won't work well for you. But if you're seeing a lot of Water and Grass types, then this team is very strong. Especially with that Kyurem there in the back. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, then make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know. And as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you want to see more content like this in the future and you're not yet subscribed, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video. And with that being said, let's get into the shout outs from my previous video. So firstly, we've got Nathan Bagel who says, I really feel like Double is amazing in the meta with this almost flawless coverage and bulk. The unfortunate thing here is that Wooloo, I think, has only been available for one event when it came out. So there's going to be hardly anyone who actually has a hundo and hardly anyone that has enough XL candies to power up a Double. But I definitely think it is a very strong Pokemon. Next, we've got Sunkelp Gyrola who says, Galarian Weezing with Fairy Wind as the fast move and Overheat and Play Rough as the charge moves is hilarious and I definitely think this unique typing combination along with that move set is going to be very strong in the Ultra League and also because it is a little bit more accessible because coughing and wheezing do spawn in the wild here and there especially in certain events I think that a lot of people will have close to or enough XL candies to power one up. And Jasper0930 says XL Skarmory. This is sort of an indirect buff because Warrain being nerfed and also the Swords of Justice being more common in the Ultra League means that Skarmory has a few better matchups in the Ultra League now, so it can be a bit stronger, although it does certainly get walled by a lot of Pokemon. So with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.